The iPod was a truly revolutionary device. Before you could stream millions of songs from your wrist, you could download a thousand songs straight into your pocket. Now, I was never old enough to really grow up when the iPod was in its heyday, although I did own multiple iPod touches growing up. So it was really dang pods that ended up convincing me to buy an iPod Nano of my own. And that's when I discovered Rockbox, a jailbreak for the iPod and a bunch of other media players that adds some really cool functionality, like iTunes-less music importing and just straight up doom. And the best part, you can install it in just a few minutes. My name is Harry, you're watching Probably Hades, and here's how you can free your iPod from the shackles of Apple's limitations. To get started here, you'll need a few things. First, you'll want to have a computer. Mac OS, Windows, and pretty much any Linux distro that supports app images all work here. You'll also need an iPod that Rockbox supports. You can find a list of supported devices on their website. And you'll also want a good old 30 pin to USB cable to connect your computer. Ideally, you'll want an official Apple cable. And if you're using a MacBook or another modern laptop, you'll almost certainly need a USB A to C adapter unless you've got one of these freaks of a cable. The first thing you'll want to do in preparation before installing Rockbox to your iPod is ensuring it's a WinPod and not a MacPod. Essentially, just make sure it's been formatted with a Windows version of iTunes. If you don't own a Windows PC or have a Windows VM ready to go on your Mac, you can manually convert your Mac formatted iPod to a Windows iPod, but they don't have the files for my device to do it, so I wasn't able to do this myself. This ended up being a real pain for me, considering that somehow in the big 25, iTunes still sucks and Apple devices on Windows isn't much better. First, iTunes didn't pick up my iPod at all, so I tried using Apple devices instead. It picked up my iPod and just gave me a message that iPod support wasn't installed and there was no way to get it installed. I relaunched Apple devices, which then finally gave me the prompt to install iPod support and I was able to format my device. The instructions for converting a MacPod to a WinPod seem pretty thorough on the Rockbox website, which I'll leave linked just below the like button so you should be all right if you have the necessary files for your device. Once you've got a Windows formatted iPod, the process is the exact same across every operating system here, with the only actual difference being, you know, obviously don't install the EXE on your Mac. Head to the Rockbox website at rockbox.org and under the downloads header, click on release. Click on the big yellow download installer button and download the right one for your OS. Like I mentioned earlier, they've got releases for Mac, Windows, and Linux here, with the Linux download being an app image, so most distros should support it. Install the app the way you usually would. On Windows, run the installer and go through the prompts. On macOS, mount the disk image and drag rockboxutility.app into your applications folder. There isn't a shortcut to the apps folder in the disk image like most other applications, so you'll have to find the folder yourself. On Linux, you should be able to just run the app image file. On macOS, you'll get this error about the app being unsigned when you go to open it for the first time. If you're on macOS Sonoma or earlier, just right click on the app, click open, then click open anyway. If you're on macOS Sequoia or later, Head into your privacy and security settings, then scroll down to the app and click open anyway. Click open anyway again, then enter your password or authenticate another way. Now you're in. On your first launch, it'll bring up this menu, getting you to select the mount point and detect your model. Select your iPod mount point in the menu, which should only have one device unless you have multiple pods plugged in, and click on auto detect down here to automatically select the correct model. If, for whatever reason, it can't find the model, you'll just have to manually select your device from the list here. Once you've applied those changes, you'll be brought to this dashboard. By default, the necessary files are selected here, like the bootloader, Rockbox itself, and the plugin data. You can add on other features here as well, like the voice packs for text-to-speech functionality, a PDF or HTML copy of the manual that you can access when you plug your iPod into a computer, and themes to spice up the look of your device. If I'm being real here, Rockbox kinda looks terrible out of the box, and the available themes here help out tremendously. You can select and download them straight from the utility by selecting them in the pop-up that appears when you enable themes. You can also preview them in the sidebar here. From this dashboard, you can also configure other accessibility features and backup or uninstall Rockbox after it's been installed. Once you've got everything configured to your liking, go ahead and click that install button. If your iPod is formatted from a Mac, you will get an error here. Head back in the video to the formatting section to get your iPod formatted to a Windows iPod. You might also get this error here about Rockbox not having permission to access your device. This seems to occur most commonly on Mac OS, which can be fixed using this command here, which I'll leave in the description and just runs the app with elevated permissions. On Linux, if you experience this error, you should just be able to run the app image with sudo and Windows users should just be able to run the app as administrator. Although this issue doesn't seem to be as prominent on those two OSs. After running as sudo or admin, you'll need to reconfigure your install before you press install again. Once you've clicked install, you've just got to wait a few minutes. Keep your iPod connected to your computer, grab a cup of coffee and something to eat, and just relax. 
Rockbox will download and move everything automatically so you don't have to do a thing. Once it's all completed and you see this message in your installation log, go ahead and close the install window and eject your iPod. Once it's ejected, it should restart into Rockbox and you're all done. If you decide that you don't want Rockbox, you can come into this menu here and uninstall both Rockbox and its bootloader, or you can simply turn off your iPod and do this with the hold switch and a button to reboot back into the stock OS. I can't show this off myself because my hold switch is broken. So now that you've got Rockbox, what can you do? First things first, let's get that theme applied if you downloaded one. You can do that by heading into settings, then theme settings and selecting your favorite theme. You can download multiple by the way, so you don't need to limit yourself to just having one on your device at a time. More importantly than looking nice, we do need to have music to get the most out of our music player. If you had music in the stock OS, clicking on database and letting it build should find it all. But easily my favorite part about Rockbox is that you don't need to use iTunes for music anymore. You can connect it to any system as a USB flash drive and just drop music files straight onto it. Even files like FLAC that iTunes doesn't let you put on iPods. To demonstrate, I'll move this FLAC straight onto the internal storage using my iPhone. If you've built your database already, it should automatically pick up any new files and organize them on its own but you can force a rebuild or a scan in the settings under general settings and database. And just like that, I'm enjoying a lossless copy of a song that usually wouldn't be supported at all. And I did it all without touching iTunes. Now that I've had my fun with that, I'll get into what you're probably here for, considering it's in the title and thumbnail, Running Doom. Running Doom is part of Rockbox's plugin system, which also allows for a ton of other apps and games to run as well, but I, I will start with Doom, I'm not gonna keep you waiting. Doom's implementation is actually really solid, allowing you to load in your own WAD files and add-ons if you want to, and including an open source copy of Freedom to run straight away. As soon as I click run game here and wait for it to load up, we're playing Doom. As you can probably tell, this is not an ideal way to play. You're using the top three sides of the click wheel as your directional inputs, no strafing or walking backwards here, and using the play pause button to fire. You can also change your weapon with the middle button. I would not recommend playing through the whole game like this, especially, especially on a nano, but it's a pretty fun tech demo regardless. The way you exit out of a specific game or app depends on the plugin. Doom, for example, requires a combo of a button and the hold switch. If Doom isn't enough for you, Rockbox also includes a built-in Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulator. Just drop your ROMs onto the internal storage and run them from the files menu. From this demo of Super Mario Land, it does seem to run at full speed, However, I can't actually get the controls to work, so your mileage may vary here. There's plenty of other built-in games as well, like Snake, 2048, and Minesweeper. If games aren't your thing, there's plenty of apps here as well. A good chunk of them are pretty useful or just kind of look cool for music playback, like LRC Viewer, which lets you view the lyrics that are embedded into a music file, or in a text or lyric file that have been put in the folder with the same name. Or the oscilloscope under demos that lets you view the waveform of the song you're playing. There's also some more interesting apps that don't really make sense, but are fun to see running on an iPod, like a fully functional calendar, a 2FA code generator that would actually work, or an interactive periodic table, for some reason. For the last party trick that I enjoy using occasionally, I present remotely controlling your PC or Mac over USB. By default, the USB control mode is set to multimedia. This essentially lets you control whatever's playing on your PC as if it was an iPod, letting you use all the controls you're used to on there. Play pause on the iPod, play pauses on your computer, the touch wheel controls volume, etc. If that's not your style, you can head to settings, general settings, system, and then USB keypad mode to change it up. So I could go to presentation mode if I needed a wired slideshow remote for a, I don't know, a school project from two years ago that I have here, or mouse mode if I felt like controlling my entire system using my iPod. See, look, you can even pull up mediocre YouTube channels with it. You could hypothetically click the subscribe button to get me closer to my goal of 10,000 subs. Although you could do that without an iPod anyway. And you should. This would be much cooler if it allowed for wireless control somehow, but obviously that's not actually possible here. I would quite literally kill to walk around on stage holding an iPod Nano while I give it a presentation but I guess I'll have to settle for an 8 do micro or something. And that's it. You've broken free from the limitations of Tim Apple and liberated your iPod to play Doom and be a presentation remote. If you like this video, make sure to hit that button and maybe even subscribe as well. You can follow me over on Instagram, Blue Sky, everything else. You can join the community Discord with the links on screen and in the description below. If you want more videos, you can click over here to check out my review of what is absolutely the coolest piece of tech I've ever used, or you can click over here to check out whatever YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.